Hey guys, today we're going to be creating a regression model with Azure ML Designer. This is a cloud guru type of lab and I'm just going to be running through with it with you guys on, you know, how to set up a Azure machine learning workspace to connect regression models and training them and giving out evaluation results. So first thing we're going to do is go to our AZ ML workspace and we can either click this URL or we can click on launch studio down here they both do the same thing now that we're in our studio we go over to data on the left side under assets and we can create our own data set we can create our own data asset I'm gonna name this data set paprika you can put a description you can put in file names and I'm going to be going with MLV1 APIs, so I'll pick the tabular, hit next. Here we get to choose our source for our data asset, and I'm going to go from web files. So you know you can do from Azure Storage, from local files, SQL databases. In this scenario, we can go off a single file located from a public web URL. So I can go ahead and click that, hit next. So for the web URL, I'm just going to put in the bike rentals. After validating, we can see that there's different settings for file format, delimiters, encoding, column headers, but I'm just going to leave everything as is, and I'll hit next. Here as well, we can filter through our schema to enable or disable certain things. We can edit the types, the names, and different formats and properties, but I'll just leave it as is, and I'll hit next, and create. So next, after this has been deployed, we can see all the attributes. We can go under authoring and click on designer. Under the classic pre-built section, we can create a new pipeline using classic pre-built components. So I'll click on this. And here I can drag and drop our Paprika data asset onto our screen. You just drag and drop it just like that. You can drag as many as you want, but you can do right click to delete some. And under Paprika, we can also right click and click on preview data. So here in this data, we're pulling it from that URL that I just put in that I got from a cloud guru. And we got the days, month, year, season, like we got all these different stats. But there's one thing I want to point out. There's something called a holiday. Holiday, everything has zeros except for this one. And then with season, all of them are one year all of them are 2011 so there's a couple fields in here that are kind of redundant and maybe we can clean through them we can filter this data and kind of clean up what we don't really need because if we know that they're all 2011 then maybe year doesn't need to be column if the all the seasons are one then maybe we don't need the season column if all holiday is one maybe we can or zero except for one then so you know what I mean. So we can, uh, this is the whole point of it. And we can create a pipeline here to kind of filter through our data output. So we can go under component here and we'll do select columns. And we got this one that says select columns in data set. I can drag this out right here. And in order to connect these two, if you drag it up from the data set to the data output you can see it doesn't do anything so it's kind of you gotta start it from the data output and then it connects like that so you can double click on this to open all the configuration settings the parameters you can hit edit column and then here we can put in some rules to select different columns so in the include we can include all columns we can hit plus here to exclude a certain column and then this is where you do column names and then from column names we knew that that year remember the years are all the same so we could put year in here and we can also put season because all the seasons were one all the years were 2011 so we hit save here and then we just press this button to close it <clears throat> You can also save it up here along the way as you go. But I just want to double. The next one we're going to do is clean 
missing data. We'll pull this one down right below select columns and data set, and we're gonna route it down here. So these three are now chained together. Double click on this, and we can edit the column. And for what columns we want to be cleaned? I wanna clean all the columns. So I'll do that, hit save. And with the cleaning mode, since I selected all of them, I'm gonna hit this drop down menu and I'll click on remove entire row and I'll hit exit. And in the next component, we're gonna put in the split data model. And the next component, we'll put in the split data module. And here we have two outputs. If I expand this, we can see one is the clean data set output and this one is the cleaning transformation. So this is in the process of cleaning still, but this is already cleaned and this is what we're gonna be using. So the clean data set is gonna be the input of our split data module. We'll double click on the split data module to open it. And all we're gonna do is increase this to 0 0.5 to 0 0.7. What this does, it just specifies a ratio that represents the number of rows in the first output data set over the number of rows in the input data set. So I'll close this out. And now we're going to be getting into our algorithms. So we've got this called linear regression. Linear regression is a training model. And we're going to be training a train model called train model. That's literally what's called it's just a model that you're going to train it's like a dummy little model you're going to train it means it which training means you're just going to program it with whatever inputs you put into it so from our split data module if i expand this we got results data set one results data set two we're only going to work with one so i'm going to input the data set into the data set input the untrained model, so you can see it right here. Like you see, this is where you put in the untrained model, this is where you put the data set. So that's where you put the data set, this is where you put the untrained model, and then in the trained model, you just double click it, and that opens the module. Configurations, so we'll hit edit column. So for column names, we can come over here, and we could type in rental. We'll put in rentals, because that's one of the names of the columns. So we'll hit save. And if we go back up to Paprika, hit preview data. This last one right here, this is the column that we're targeting. And as you can see, it's called rentals. So that's the name that I'm putting into here. So next, we'll add a couple more modules. The next one is a score model. And as you can see with here, we've got a trained model input and a data set input. So if we want to output our train model, we need to input it to this train model input. And now, which brings us back to the split data module, we can grab our second data set and just put it directly into the data set of the score model. So doing this, it splits the data. So one piece of the data is going through the train module and being run with the linear regression algorithm to filter through the data into the input of this train model and the other side of this data that's being split is just going directly into the score model without the algorithm so we get to compare the two this gives us a score and we're going to grab the evaluate model and if we expand this We've got scored data set and scored data set to compare. We're just gonna connect the scored data set to the scored data set input. So here we can go ahead, click configure and submit. For the experiment name, we can create a new one, paprika test. And you can give it whatever display name, description. Hit next, we got the inputs and outputs. For default compute, you got to select your compute cluster. You can use Kubernetes computes or any kind of attached clusters. So here I'm just going to be using the one provided by Cloud Guru. For data store, 
We can just use the default. We can use blob storage, working directories, file storage, artifact stores. So we'll just use the default next. Then we can hit submit after we reviewed it. And as we can see, our pipeline job has been submitted. I'll click on view details. It opens up a new tab and we can see it's running, submitted. And if we come under here, under our evaluate model module, I right click. So we're currently still running. This might run, run for a little bit. So now that our job has been completed, we can go over to the evaluate model, right click, preview data, and view our evaluation results. You can see here that we have a few different things like mean absolute error, root squared error. I'll even uh, full. I'll expand this panel so we can see all of them. So our mean absolute error is 288. Our root mean error is 443. Relative squared error is 0 0.38. Relative of absolute error is 0 0.5. Coefficient of determination is 0 0.6. So what do these numbers mean? I made a little chart here where R2 score means higher equals the better the performance is. So, so the higher this number is means the better our data is running. And the lower, so here we see that the root mean squared error. The higher the number is means the more errors there are and the worse the performance is. With coefficient of determination, the higher the number is, the better it's performing. So if we go here, this is our first one that we've run. So we don't have much to base it off of. So we'll just keep a mental note. We were at like 440. This one was 0 0.6. And this is 288. So in order to optimize this, we got to make sure that our root mean error goes down from 440. We want to bring it down. And our coefficiency, we want this to go up. So 0 0.6, maybe we can get 0 0.7. So we'll try to get this down to 400 instead of 443. So in order to get it down, we can try a different algorithm. So I'm going to go ahead and we can delete this or we can do clone. So cloning it, we create a replica of our architecture here. I'll go here and click delete. And instead of using the regression, the linear regression, I'm going to do boosted tree, boosted decision tree regression and I'm going to input this untrained module into the untrained model of the module so with this now we can go ahead and do a configure submit again I'll use the existing experiment and I'll review that submit it and I'll run this job so our job has been submitted and it's running and currently we're training our model we're running this algorithm against our incoming data set. So we can see it's completed. I'll right click preview data. Last time, our root mean squared error was about 443. And our coefficient determination was 0.61 ish, if I remember correctly. So we go to evaluation results here, expand, and we can see we brought it down to 345. So we brought it down like a whole 100 points. The coefficient, we brought it up 0 0.14 points about. So that's a lot better. We reached our goal of optimization. Now let's try a different one to see if we can optimize it even more. So I'll go back here into our designer. See over here in the jobs, you can't delete it because the jobs, you see this is where the jobs are. But the designer, that's where you actually design it. So we can go back to our designer, go back, hit delete. And I'll just type in regression to view some of the other regression modules. So we already did the linear. We tried the boosted tree regression. So now we're going to do the decision forest regression. We'll plug this into our on-trade model, configure and submit. And we'll just use the same experiment. We'll load up that job. We'll go over to our asset jobs. We'll check our experiment. We'll view our latest pipeline here. It's still running. Open it up. 
and we'll just wait another five or so minutes until this is done training our model. So our pipeline job is completed, running successfully. We can go ahead under preview data, check our evaluation results, and we can see that our root mean squared error went down even more from 345 to 322. If I expand this, our coefficient is almost at 0 0.8, almost there. So it's a little bit higher than what we had, I think we were at 0 0.76 before. So it brought it up a few digits, but overall, it looks like the decision force regression is just a bit more efficient than the other two regressions. So that's all I've got in today's video. So thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Feel free to go on the link description, join a Discord community, come study with us.